Hi everyone, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com and today I'm going to share with you what my two-year-old eats in a day. So at the timing of this video, he just turned two years old a few days ago. It, time went by so fast, I can hardly believe it, but it's so fun. I absolutely love the two-year-old stage. I know that there are some challenges and everything too, but since he's my fourth and I have a big context of kind of the developmental stages that they go through as they get older, I have to say two has got to be one of my favorite ages. They're just so fun and innocent and real and they're starting to really express themselves. Their personalities are really starting to come out and I just think it's so fun. So I'm looking forward to this year with him. So I'm gonna take you along and show you where he's currently at with his eating. So if you've been with me for a while, you'll remember that I took you through when I first introduced solids with him with the Baby Gaps diet. And I have all those videos up in a playlist called Baby Gaps. So you can go back and watch those if you're new. And then after that, he slowly transitioned more into a full Weston A. Price style diet. We waited on some things like fruit until after he turned one. We waited on things like starches and grains and things like that. And more recently, I've done a what my toddler eats in a day when he was 18 months old. And at that point, he was still not eating really starches or grains or anything like that. And since then, we've slowly been trying out more of those types of foods. We've started off with the starches and things like that, slowly introduced those and watched to see how he did, and he did great. There were no issues at all. And then a while later after that, we slowly and carefully started with the properly prepared grains. So soaked or fermented grains like oats or buckwheat, which I know is technically a seed, and then starting in with the real sourdough bread and different things like that. And he has done great with all of those, no issues whatsoever. So that's been really wonderful to see. And now he is really eating a full Weston A. Price diet. I still limit certain things like sweeteners quite a bit. If he does have a dessert, it'll be a homemade nutrient dense one. I do not let him have any type of processed food or refined foods like sugars or, or sweets or anything like that. He does not get any of that yet. I would like to keep his palate nice and just, you know, within whole real foods for now, as long as possible. And that does include some homemade nutrient dense desserts like our ice cream that we like to make, different things like that. So let's go ahead and jump in. And I'm gonna take you through the day and just show you an example of the meals that he's currently having at this time. For breakfast today, he's having a really typical weekday breakfast that we have been having quite a lot of lately. We have this egg, baked egg casserole. So it has ground pork sausage on the bottom and then it has eggs and then cheese on the top. We bake that in the oven and then we can easily just cut pieces and reheat that to have uh, during the week for a quick and easy nourishing breakfast. He's also having an extra pork sausage alongside with it. And then some sprouted spelt sourdough bread with a bunch of grass-fed butter on it. And then for his fermented food for this meal, he is also having some milk kefir in the yellow cup. And then every day with breakfast, he also gets a teaspoon of the Rosita cod liver oil. I like to give that with breakfast because it's beneficial to have it along with butter. The two work very well together from my research and so breakfast is when I give him his cod liver oil. And he likes it. He'll actually ask for it oftentimes and he takes it very well. And then another thing that he loves is kombucha. So he will oftentimes drink small amounts of that at different times throughout the day, sometimes with a meal, sometimes in between. A meal. So here about mid-morning he's having some kombucha. And then about mid to late morning today he's having some apples sliced. He does have fruit. We try to keep fruit more in between meals but we're not super strict about that. But for the most part when possible we try to keep fruit between meals. So he's having some sliced apple which he likes and he does really well with fruit. Like I talked about in my last video on what he's eating. We've introduced that after he turned a year and 
he did just fine. And then also whenever we have something sweet like fruit, whenever possible, we like to pair it with something that's fat and protein. And so I like to include cheese along with fruit oftentimes. And then I fully realized that when we're eating these apples and cheese and everything at this time of the day, which is like mid to late morning, this is probably going to fill him up enough to where he's not going to be super hungry for a lot of lunch. And that's okay. I just always try to keep that in mind and try to have anything that's a snack food, make sure it's, you know, something that could also pass for somewhat of a meal so that he's not compromising or anything like that. So sometimes on these busier days when we have a lot going on, sometimes that just happens to where some an older sibling will ask for an apple and then he's like, oh, can I have apple too? Have apple. And then so I'll get him one and then I'm just like, okay, well, that and cheese is going to be like a the first stage of your lunch for today and we'll see how hungry you are for everything else. So that's what he's doing here. And then you can see by the time he's done here, he really ate most of the cheese and then some of the apple, he didn't even really want to finish the apple, and then he's got his kombucha there. And then for lunch today, which is a while after he had the apples and cheese, and a little before he's ready to go down for his nap for the day, we had this hamburger soup that I made last night, and um, this is actually his leftovers from last night. He drank the broth out of it last night with a straw, and then so he has meat and vegetables left today, and he wasn't super hungry because he had had the the cheese with some apples before this and kombucha so for lunch he really ended up eating mostly just sauerkraut and then he did take a couple little bites of the meat out of there as well and when they choose to not eat a huge amount then I always just go with it small children like this are very in tune with their bodies and they know when they need food or don't need food and so as long as they are healthy and happy and growing well and everything seems to be going fine. So I just make nourishing food and serve it to them frequently and they decide to either eat it or not and everybody is doing great. So um, he did end up eating all of his sauerkraut at lunch. He really likes sauerkraut and then like I said a couple bites of the meat and then he was done with lunch. Okay and then we're also going to put this here. So you can have your sauerkraut. Sauerkraut. Mm-hmm. Yummy sauerkraut. Cheese. Yummy. Oh. Yay. And then later in the day, this is about mid-afternoon, um, he did end up having his apples and cheese and then the soup and the sauerkraut fairly early in the day. It was all before noon. And so that's a pretty long stretch before we were gonna eat dinner as a family. And so I could tell he was getting hungry and needed something more to eat in between that stretch of time. And so he had like a second lunch here today. So it's a leftover uh, grass-fed beef burger patty with some melted white cheddar cheese on top. He also had some more sauerkraut and then he had the pieces of apple on his plate from earlier, but he didn't end up eating any of the apple. He just stuck to the burger patty and cheese for now. And then for dinner tonight, we actually as a family ended up having the same hamburger soup again. My family does not mind that at all. If we make something that everybody really likes and I made a giant batch of this, sometimes we will do that and we'll just have the same thing two nights in a row. I don't do it super often, but I just make sure it's something that everybody's okay with and really likes and, and we're fine doing that. And it definitely makes things easier on busy days like that. So when it was time to eat dinner, he went back into his seat and then he had the rest of his burger patty and then I pulled out the soup again, heated it up again for him and he didn't really end up eating a whole lot more he ate a little bit of the vegetables from the soup, he ate a little bit more of the meat from the burger patty, and then he actually had this meal. He ate a ton of sauerkraut. I think it was four helpings of sauerkraut he went through. He just kept asking for it, so I kept giving it to him. And that's the thing, when they're this young and all they have is nourishing real food, they are so in tune with their bodies that they really do know what they need, whether it is some vegetables or some meat or some more fermented food or, or water or not, or you know, all those things. They're just very in tune with and it's really neat to see them follow 
their intuition and what their body needs any given time. Can you say more sauerkraut? More sauerkraut. Good job. You do want more. You asked for it on your own, didn't you? More sauerkraut. More sauerkraut, okay. And then here's just another like bonus clip of him eating lunch on another day. So on this day, he's having just some cooked ground beef. This was some ground beef that we like to cook just in a pan with onion, garlic, salt, and pepper. And we'll use it for various dishes and we had it with something else for dinner. I don't even remember what it was. But today he's having some of that leftover with some carrots and then homemade ranch dip and then more sauerkraut as well. So I just wanted to give another example of what he also has for a lunch since I felt like the day that I was showing what he was eating didn't have a huge amount of variety. And then speaking of variety, let's talk about that for a second because Dr. Natasha of the GAPS diet talks about how kids don't need a huge amount of variety. They really just don't. It's okay to keep things very simple and doable. And it is good to strive for a bit of variety, like changing up the kinds of meat, like don't have just one kind of meat all the time. Switch around the vegetables a bit. Switch around to some different kinds of fruit. Try some different toppings and sauces and th things like that. Different sides, you know, as much variety as, as you feel is not overwhelming, but don't, she says, don't worry about going overboard on huge amounts of variety for little kids thinking that they need that and making yourself go crazy because they really don't. They're okay with meat, vegetables, dip, you know, just keeping it simple. If they're having the same thing a couple times in a row, that's okay. Whatever keeps it nice and doable. And the main thing is that it's high quality, nutrient dense, nourishing food that you made at home with love. That's what goes very far. So I just wanted to add that because I don't stress over huge amounts of variety and it sure makes things easier. Everybody's fine with it. And so if that is helpful for you to know, then I just wanted to share that too. And then as far as desserts, like I mentioned, he will sometimes have a nutrient dense dessert that we're having, a homemade thing like our ice cream or Russian custard or something like that every once in a while. So we have a schedule for our family where we say certain days have dessert nights. So for us, that's Sundays, Tuesdays, and Fridays are days that we try to have some type of a dessert at some point in the day, usually after dinner or like on Sunday more in the middle of the day. And so he sticks to that same schedule too, although he doesn't even have it as often as we do. If he's done eating and he's full and he's down playing and he's not showing any interest, then I don't worry about it and I don't push it. But when he is hungry for it, he does enjoy some nice homemade ice cream with grass-fed cream and egg yolks and all that good stuff. So just wanted to share kind of frequency for that. So it's a two, three at the most times a week for something like that for him. So I hope that you enjoyed coming along and seeing what my two-year-old is currently eating in a day. Hope that you found that interesting and helpful. You can check out the whole series of taking him through baby gaps when he first started solids. There's a playlist of those videos on my YouTube channel and then I also have the written version on my website, bumblebeeapothecary.com. I also have other resources down in the description box, so be sure and check those out. I have free eBooks. I have meal plans, both gaps and full Weston A. Price or Wise Traditions style meal plans. I also have a program for helping kids overcome picky eating and all kinds of different things. So definitely check out that description box if you're interested in any of those things. And if you did like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with anybody else who you think would enjoy it or find it helpful or interesting. And if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out new videos every week on nourishing recipes and natural living. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.